Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And today we're talking specifically about the Lost Mine of Fandelva. This is a Dungeon Master Guide. It's not for players. So if you're playing the game and you're not the Dungeon Master, you shouldn't be here. And the topic we're going to talk about with regard to the Lost Mine of Fandelva is one of the main villains or one of the main NPCs or characters and as it happens that particular villain or character NPC is Venom Fang. Venom Fang is a dragon and like any game of Dungeons and Dragons it would be quite peculiar not to have a dragon involved. Now Venom Fang is a very young green dragon. It spells it out, there are details in the adventure book if you want to check them out. Now, he lives in the ruins of Thunder Tree. Now for those of you who are not completely familiar with the location of Thunder Tree, it's on the front map. It gives you the the basic location between it's just sort of to the side of Neverwinter and you can venture there at some point or when your players are ready. So there's one of the this is the ruins that uh, the green dragon Venom Fang has taken up and it's very close to a forest. In fact it's the Neverwinter Forest which makes a lot of sense because it's a green dragon and green dragons like foresty areas. They also like water and there's not an awful lot of water there but there is a stream that runs through the forest that's very close to Thunder Tree. Now he's taken up residence, uh, Venom Fang, taken up residence in what is essentially a, a wizard's tower. It's an old wizard's tower which is location 7 on the map that you can see right now. And this is basically um, a round structure with a square box. It has three, two entry points, actually three entry points, two on the ground, a one through the roof, which Venom Fang has created himself. Now, the thing with the, the Wizard's Tower, now the Wizard used to live there, but was killed quite a while ago, and Ash Zombies have uh, disposed of that Wizard. All of his stuff is still there. Nobody's actually ventured there because it's so dangerous. And those ash zombies have moved on and then some giant spiders took up residence. And what has happened is essentially that Venom Fang has basically killed everything that was living in this location. It's a sizable um, tower so it makes sense that Venom Fang might use it. But it's not ultimately, I think, the best location for a green dragon. So he killed the giant spiders and their bodies are sort of sitting out the front of the building. So it's a bit ominous, um, the, the first location you come across when it comes to Venom Fang's lair. And unfortunately it's not a full-fledged lair. Uh, when I say a Dungeons and Dragons dragon lair, uh, Venom Fang hasn't actually been there that long. The, the bodies of the giant spiders haven't completely decomposed. He's actually only been there a very short period of time. And that's something to bear in mind. So why is Venom Fang there? We're going to answer that question. I have some speculation for you. The book has very little information on the dragon. So when you want to look up and find out a bit of information about Venom Fang, there's very little information whatsoever. It covers, I would say, half a page, of which uh, not all of it is very good. So if you look at pages 32 through to pages 33 of The Lost Mine of Fandelva, there is some information there, but when it comes to tactical advice, I want you to ignore everything in the book. Um, now, you don't have to listen to me. You can disagree with me. You can say, no, this is how it should be run. This is the character of Venom Fang, but it's going to be a sucky dragon because that's what happened to me. I ran it as the book instructed me to. I didn't really fully understand Dungeons & Dragons 5e because it's the very first adventure I ran. Uh, for the full, you know for the completed version, um, we've been playing um, the alpha um, play test, and then the, this came out, and then of course all the rules got concreted in. There were a, a few changes, so it's the very first adventure I ever ran. So I didn't really fully understand the dragon. So my advice to you is, don't run your dragon Venom Fang like the book suggests. Not a good idea. Now this dragon has been keeping a low profile in Thunder Tree, in the Thunder Tree ruins, basically just hiding out. I want to talk a little bit about that and it will get to there. Um, there's an important reason to sort of focus on that part of it because 
He's been there a very short period of time. Why is he there? He's been keeping a low profile, so something's up. And it's not spelled out in the book. So I'm having to read between the lines now. Uh, and if you spend a little bit of time reading through the section and you've played the adventure, it becomes obvious there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that we don't know about, which I suspect they cut from the original adventure because of space. So Venom Fang has made a hole in the tower roof for the, the wizard's tower. And this allows easy access uh, for the, the dragon to get in and out. It also provides the, the dragon who has quite a long neck a nice spy hole or spying point. That dragon can basically stick its head up and just look out and pop around just to see what's going on. Because it is surrounded essentially by a whole lot of walls, which doesn't really sort of lend it to being an easily um, trapped location or, uh, or being able to view your enemy if they decide to come to your location. It's not like Thunder Tree Ruins is a hidden location. It's marked on the map, and the map that I showed you is for the player's characters. So finding this location and eventually exploring that location is going to happen at some point. So Venom Fang has selected a lair that is not well suited, in my opinion, for any kind of dragon whatsoever. And there are a couple of reasons why it's not well suited for Green Dragon, and why I believe it is a temporary location even though the book says otherwise. And this is, this is the reason. One, it's close to the forest, but it's not in the forest. It's not in a cave. Now, not all dragons hide out in caves. I totally understand that. But the most important aspect of it is that green dragons prefer, sorry, green dragons prefer a hidden lair. Now, when I say a hidden lair, a hidden lair entrance. And they usually have a back door escape route. And that location is usually working to, for, towards the, the um, advantages and the strengths that they have. So there's usually like a water or a pool exit. Some sort of water they can use because they can breathe underwater. So why would they not have something close to water? Which is why I think Wave Echo Cave is a much better location for Venom Fang as a, a lair. Now the other thing I want to point out is that this is not a true young green dragon lair because you don't get lair actions. There's no lair actions, there's no regional effects for Thunder Tree and Venom Fang. Now that significantly reduces the power and effectiveness of Venom Fang if combat breaks out, which more than likely if they go anywhere near the dragon it's going to happen. So this is why I believe that that particular location, that tower, is a bad choice. It's like a trap for Venom Fang if someone decides to explore it as far as I'm concerned. Venom Fang has actually been trapped down as it happens. There has been a group of individuals that have managed to find out enough about this dragon. They have tracked down Venom Fang and they've been pursuing him. Venom Fang has been pursued and tracked down by a cult of the dragon cultists who are wanting to get the young dragon to aid them in bringing Tarmac into the world, which is like a terrible idea, but for them it's a great idea. So please note, uh, Venom Fang is known about, and the adventure doesn't talk about that fact, but I'm pretty sure that something is up. And as a dungeon master, you can make up a whole lot of different things. I've got a few suggestions, which I'm going to put forward very shortly. But please note, Venom Fang has no lair actions and has no regional effects. Okay, green dragons on the run. So I believe that Venom Fang, this green dragon, is on the run maybe from maybe a larger dragon that has threatened Venom Fang, the young dragon, and forced Venom Fang... Uh, to to wind up residing at Thunder Tree. It doesn't really uh, spell out this in the adventure, as I say, but I think if you read between the lines, it seems perfectly reasonable that that is what's actually going on. And if you disagree with me, you let me know. Venom Fang is greedy, like most dragons, and has collected a very small treasure hoard uh, from the dead wizard supplies in the tower. So he hasn't really had time to go exploring 
and, and collect his own loot um, and treasures. He simply collected together everything that he found in the tower because nothing was actually really removed from the tower because of the ash zombies really, they don't have no use for those sorts of things and giant spiders really don't have any use for anything that a, a wizard might use. But uh, a young dragon would absolutely have some use for them. Venom Fang's sex is not stated. There's actually no... No, nowhere in the adventure does it actually state that Venom Fang is male or female. So I'm going to leave it up to you. You decide whether you think Venom Fang is male or female or in between. I mean, you know, why not? Sneaking up on Venom Fang. Here's one of the things that I find uh, a little bit frustrating is I allowed my players to actually do this and then I thought about it later on and I've had more time I've had a couple of years now to think about it and it actually realized that well it's actually quite ridiculous that they would be able to sneak up on Venom Fang and here is my rationale I believe that sneaking up on Venom Fang is nonsense because of all the battles that take place around that location the number of battles they engaged with is quite um, quite immense and none of the building structures or the fights that will break out as they make their way um, through that location none of them are that far away and the sound would travel so I think that the just the, the simple fact of them engaging in combat the, the players characters the party engaging in combat would alert any kind of dragon to their presence and of course they would then be watched very closely so that's one aspect to uh, not sneaking up on Venom Fang. Next is that dragons have super senses. They have super hearing, super sight, super smell. They have blind sight. Obviously, you know, blind sight and um, and dark vision not necessarily going to be absolutely uh, useful if you're surrounded by something that has total cover. But remember that the the ceiling, the the roof of the tower is gone. It's been torn out and destroyed so things like smells and sounds would make their way to Venom Fang also too Venom Fang has a plus seven perception modifier it is a plus seven perception modifier which means a passive check which I would use as a dungeon master rather than roll I would probably use the 17 that's 10 plus your perception modifier so that's 10 plus 7 that's 17 Venom, sh sorry, Venom Fang should be in the air, in my opinion. When the players finally encounter this dragon, I believe that Venom Fang should be in the air. And if Venom Fang's not in the air, should be on top of the tower, on top of the tower roof, ready to meet the characters, to engage in a conversation, if you feel that's going to be suitable. But, you know, if they have their weapons drawn, I don't think that the dragon's necessarily going to worry about that. Remember, this is not an ancient um, green dragon. This is a young green dragon. It knows it is uh, fragile enough that it needs to hide. It's not stupid. Um, it's not as smart as an ancient red dragon, but its intelligence and its wisdom is high enough to indicate that it would be using fairly complicated uh, strategies and tactics so I believe that Venom Fang should be in the air or on top of the, the tower roof now the reason for this is I've talked to dungeon masters who ran the encounter with Venom Fang and every encounter that was run with Venom Fang in the air or with Venom Fang on top of the roof turned out really well it was a good encounter it was scary for the players the dungeon master was quite satisfied with what took place and every um, dungeon master, including myself, that I have come across, and I, uh, granted I don't know every dungeon master in the world, has told me that when Venom Fang was found in the tower, on the ground, it just did not work, and Venom Fang just got crushed. Particularly if they were playing something like a paladin, or a hard hitter, uh, even the rogue can do quite a lot of damage, but the paladin in particular just tears through them. About two or three rounds, I think, is about right. Um, I do remember my players commenting that they were really disappointed that Venom Fang couldn't put up a better fight than he did. So that's why I'm saying make sure that they encounter Venom Fang either in the air flying 
or on top of the roof. So he's out of reach of close melee weapons. Now remember, he shouldn't be getting sn um, snuck up on. It should be pretty clear that the player's characters are in this location and that the dragon knows that they are there. So now that we have gone through all of that, our biggest problem is that we're going to have to switch from the Lost Mine of Fandalva to another book. And that is because there just isn't enough information in there to do what we need to do. So this is why I'm suggesting we're going to grab another book. And that book is, as it happens, the Monster Manual for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. So pick that book up. This is the book that you're going to get most of your information for Green Dragons. Uh, green da Dragons are detailed in detail. Sorry. In detail? Yes, of course. They are, of course they are detailed in detail. There is a lot of information on Green Dragons in the Monster Manual. Look at page 95 and it talks about Green Dragons. Uh, they are treacherous, they are cunning, they are tricky. Mostly they have a really nasty temper. They are thoroughly evil. Absolutely as evil as can be. Which means that they are just as deceptive and cunning and tricky as any player character could try and be. They're also probably not to be trusted because they are liars. They're pants on fires. These dragons lie through their teeth. They are masters of deception. And any kind of character that shows up and tries to use honey-tongued, smooth, sophisticated talk on a dragon of this nature is going to get exactly the same thing back from Venom Fang because he's a honey-tongued, smooth and sophisticated talker himself. Hunting. Now, uh, when it comes to something like um, hunting for Venom Fang, you'll find that most of his hunting takes place in the forest territory, which is never winter, and you will not normally see him on the ground. He's usually going to be flying uh, in the air. He might go to ground if he has no other choice, and that's probably to pick up a kill if it drops to the ground, uh, or see something that uh, doesn't really allow him to sort of fly on down, breathe on it, kill it with it, um, his breath, and then move on uh, once he's picked it up. So try to remember that, hunting usually in the forest location, rather than having, I mean, the book talks about green dragons uh, using the air and the ground to hunt, but I feel it's more for an ancient green dragon rather than a young green dragon. I think a young dream, green dragon would stick to strategies and techniques that they know work fairly well, rather than getting a little bit too creative. Venom Fang fights in the air. So when it comes to the tactics with Venom Fang, this is what you want to do. If you want your combat to be even remotely uh, challenging, interesting, exciting, or even deadly, and it should be deadly. It's a dragon, it should be deadly. Venom Fang fights in the air. Use his breath weapon as much as possible. Remember, you can decide how close the forest encroaches on Thunder Tree. There might be quite a, a, a close uh, tree line, which means that because the dragon can fly so fast, it will allow him to get out of reach of missile fire with almost one round of, of flying. So make sure, keep him out of range while his breath weapon charges up, then fly him back down and breathe. Now, unless they have managed to find an area that has total cover, and has all the cracks and nooks and crannies um, filled up, tightly um, packed, that poison breath is going to make its way through the cracks and hurt the player's characters. But they will get a bonus, so if they have half cover, they should be getting a, uh, a bonus uh, to dexterity, which of course is not going to help them with poison, um, poison breath. Poison breath works a little bit differently. But I know that the players are going to be a little bit confused by this. So when you come to this situation and they've taken either something that gives them uh, almost total cover, but there's still cracks and nooks that uh, the, the breath could get through, or uh, there's uh, locations that uh, essentially um, give them three-quarter cover or half cover, my suggestion to you is 
give them advantage on the, the saving throw for the breath weapon. If they're out in the open, no advantage and no benefits or bonuses. Because remember, you know, benefits and bonuses with cover apply to dexterity saving throws rather than the check that they're going to be making with a poison breath. Don't rely on brute strength. Brute strength with Venom Fang is a really bad idea. I, I find it frustrating when I see people who talk about how a dragon encounter didn't work out for them and what they decided to do is muscle it down with the dragon at close quarters because they see the, the stat block and they say, well, yeah, but I get more attacks. I get more attacks, but you don't need them. You have a breath weapon which can target an area. It's a cone. So why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense. Stick with the breath weapon. Don't go mucking around and doing things that you shouldn't be doing, which is getting up close. Venom Fang will flee. Now here, here's my rationale for why Venom Fang would flee. Venom Fang would flee because one, being a young green dragon, he's not the most powerful dragon, knows this, already been driven off by somebody else as I've, su I've suggested. We don't know that for sure, but I have suggested that it's the case. Uh, it's up to you when you think that should happen. I think uh, it's going to be based off the amount of damage that is going to be output at range from the player's characters. So if they're able to down half his hit points in one round, which I doubt they could, uh, then it's probably time to bug out and fly away. Just do the dash action, move, use your action and dash and get as far out of reach as possible. Fly for the trees. Find yourself a nice hidey, hidey place for uh, Venom Fang to take a short rest, get all his hit points back, his breath weapon will be all recharged, come back, and then go looking for the player's characters again. Is that sound really devious and nasty from a dungeon master? Yes, it does. But you should still do it. <laughs> now, if the kind of damage they're putting out is maybe like a quarter of Venom Fang's hit points, and that's per round, then you might be able to stick around for two rounds before it's time to fly away. I think this is why the adventure talks about driving the green dragon away rather than killing the green, dra green dragon. I think the designers were thinking that the players will drive Venom Fang away, maybe temporarily, maybe permanently, but they'll never get an opportunity to actually kill Venom Fang. Not unless they do something superbly impressive or they're an extremely high level and they have access to spells that manage to get past all the advantages that a green dragon would have. That's my view of how it should work. And of course you don't have to agree like anything, you are welcome to disagree. But what I want to do is I just want to highlight the fact that I spent a lot of time researching and figuring out the best way to do this. And I think personally that this is the best way to approach Venom Fan. There is a bunch of treasure if they, if they manage to drive Venom Fang off or kill Venom Fang that they can grab and that is there's um, uh, 80, uh, 800, sorry, sorry, 800 silver pieces, 150 gold pieces, four silver goblets set with moonstones, each worth um, 60 gold each. There's a scroll of Misty Step, quite useful, unfortunately they won't, and a scroll of Lightning Bolt. Uh, there's also an axe, a plus one axe called Hue. Um, and the details for that, basically it does more damage against uh, anything that's made of wood. Um, it's really useful for all the blights that are walking around in that location, but they've probably already destroyed all of them by the time they get Hue. So never mind, next time maybe they'll find uh, another option for that axe at a later date. You never know. So when it comes to fighting Venom Fang, I want you to really think hard. I want you to take a bit of time, assess the situation, make up a good battle strategy for Venom Fang so he doesn't wind up being a, a pussy because he's a dragon. He should not be coming off as being a pussy. That would just be terrible. So check that monster manual. Have a good hard read. Don't just look at the stat block. 
Have a look at the, the fluff, the information on green dragons, so that you've got a really good understanding of what's taking place. I feel that Venom Fang should show up at a later date, uh, probably to try and um, um, take over Wave Echo Cave, because it's at the perfect kind of lair for a dra um, dragon of this nature. Okay, so let's go to the stat block and just have a quick look at the, the numbers. So, um, young green dragon, good, good armor class, lots of hit points, has a land speed of 40 feet, you don't be using that. Fly speed of 80 feet, use the fly speed, okay? Don't go on the ground. As I said, um, got a reasonable perception modifier, not a stupid dragon, got a high intelligence and wisdom, is completely immune to poison damage, which makes a lot of sense, and also immune to uh, the poison condition. Has 30 feet worth of blind sight, and has 120 feet of dark vision, which isn't going to do any good to you if you've got walls in the way anyway. But it does have um, a passive perception of 17, as we discussed before. Challenge rating 8. So when should they be facing Venom Fang? Uh, a sensible group will try to do it around level 4 or 5. I feel that 5 is probably the smartest option. But my group, who were about 6 or 7 players and had used uh, everything out of the player's handbook, managed to deal with the Venom Fang in about 2 or 3 rounds. He can breathe underwater, he breathes air but he breathes underwater, so I feel like a green dragon works best when there's water involved, and my experience so far is that dragons that breathe underwater and can go underwater cause a whole lot of hassles for any party. Has multi attacks, so you get three attacks, one with a bite, two with the claws, Remember, your, your strategies behind the dragon, if you can't get your breath weapon to, um, to recharge, but you're in a position where you could fly down and try and grapple one of the characters, then go for it. Now remember, when you fly down and grapple, you're not landing. And I know that um, Jeremy Crawford has actually stated that multi-attack doesn't work like uh, extra attack, where you can substitute one attack for a grapple. Who cares? Do it anyway. I feel that action economy works to the advantage of the player's characters rather than the dragon if you would do that. So I would honestly just replace one of those attacks. If it fails, then use another one. You've got three attacks you can make. One with a bite, two with a claws. So fly in, grab your target. If you still have attacks left, unleash with the other claw to give it another squish and do some more damage. Bite them. If they're... Uh, not dead, or well, they're dead, it's up to you, but now fly away, fly up, remember you can fly 80 feet total, and you can go horizontal and vertical, and you're still going to be nice and nice and out of reach of anybody who's got uh, close quarter combat um, abilities. And then, drop them, drop them, okay, that's a really good technique when you can't get the breath weapon to work out. Otherwise, if the player's characters go to ground and are sort of impossible for the green dragon to access, then I would either stick him on the roof if he can't be targeted by the player's characters to wait them out. You can put him on the other side of the roof so he can't be seen. So there's the, the tower, the top of the tower has been torn out, but some of the roof will still be hidden. Or if you feel that's going to be putting Venom Fang in a really bad situation, which it might well, he can fly off and uh, patrol the area for a little while or fly off and come back later on. That is how I would do it. Um, so as we, as we look down here, you can see the bite attack, you can see the claw attack and how they work. The poison breath recharges if you roll a six sided dice and if you get a five or a six, you do this at the start of the turn, okay, when you're doing using Venom Fang and he uses a, a 30 foot cone. It's not a huge cone, so you have to be quite close but you don't have to be so close that they can target you with weapons. All right, and it's a DC 14 constitution saving throw, so no dexterity saving throw, so cover doesn't really help you with that, but as I've already explained how to approach cover if you want to do it that way. You don't have to do it that way at all if you don't want to, but I think it's reasonable if the player's characters use some sort of cover that you give them some sort of benefit, rather than saying, no, nope, you get nothing. Okay. Well, that's it. That's everything I have on Venom Fang. So if you found this useful, entertaining, 
uh, educational, please share and like the video. If you like this sort of content, I do this sort of content all the time, usually at once a week. There's more videos, so please consider subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. If you wanted to support my channel, you supported my channel by watching this video, and thank you very much, I do appreciate it. If you want to continue supporting me, watch more of my videos. I have hundreds of them, I think like 600 or something. There's bound to be something in there that you'll find useful. And there are more videos on The Lost Mine of Fandalva if you want to check them out. Now I don't do Patreon, but down in the description you'll find affiliate links to the book depository in Amazon, where you can buy stuff online. I get a small commission, you pay the exactly the same price as you normally would. Okay, just go through that link. You don't have to buy what I've linked to. Just go through the link and then buy what you want. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Now, this is your opportunity in the live chat. Give me some feedback. Ask me some questions. I will respond to you. That's why I do this sort of thing. Now, if you're not part of the live stream and you have any questions, feedback, anything you want to disagree with or add, or if you just want to say hi, that's what the comment section's all about. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.